Minecraft recently introduced add-ons to the marketplace which allow you to alter your existing survival worlds in fun, frivolous, or serious ways. This is something which originally was a very exclusive club after the whole first month of add-ons being around, just four new ones were added, but now we see that many every single week and there's a collection of over 40 add-ons to choose from, so I figured I would go through some of the newest and let you know which is the cheapest, the most expensive, the best and the worst, as well as everything in between. I've got 10 separate add-ons to go through today, so join me on this fun adventure because hello, I'm a X Toy Cat, and I guess I need some mine coins. Honestly, I know most people are fine with microtransactions, but it's something that always hurts me to do personally. The only thing that makes it better is knowing I'm helping other people with their decisions. Hopefully, it's more than it ends up costing me. Anyway, this is the marketplace, and here is a section just for add-ons, and you can scroll by different categories, but we'll be looking through the popular add-ons today, because I found one that really indulges my inner frugal, frugal person, because instead of having to spend the equivalent of eight or nine US dollars in some cases, if you are lucky enough to find the lantern an add-on, then you can spend the equivalent of just 160 mine coins. That's about a US dollar or 79p. That's so cheap that I feel like I have to start here. After activating the Tele Lanterns add-on, I'm here in the world that looks so drastically different. I'm of course joking. This is the very cheapest add-on they've ever released, and so I have some questions about what exactly is inside. It sounds as though it's just a lantern that can teleport you around, but that doesn't necessarily sound like a bad thing, so let's see what's going on. We need two iron blocks and an end crystal. Oh wow, that is expensive. Unless you are to find a new village, in which case you can find them for cheap. I am lucky enough that I can afford that though, so let's make a tele lantern. So somewhere in my world I'd love to be able to teleport to, but currently can't set up a nether portal for because I've got one at my base, is right here at my armory. Let's set down a tele lantern right here. And then let's say this is going to be a location, the blacksmith if we will. And then we can set an RGB value for it by playing around with these. I'm going to go with uh, a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. I feel like that's going to be nice. And then that gives me a purple tele lantern, which I can then use to teleport to later. Do, how do we do that? Do you think I need a second tele lantern for this one to be worthwhile? That seems expensive, but let's try it. Somewhere else in the world I rarely visit is my volcano, and I figure this could be a great place for a second Tele Lantern, and let's make this one very different, right? Let's make this uh, not just called Volcano, that's how you spell it, I'm pretty sure, uh, but let's make this one very red with basically no green and no blue, and then let's see how we can teleport between the two. So I can now warp to the Armorsmith. Uh, this is a warp that will take any players in its area over to the new one. Oh and apparently cause some lag. Uh, but then we can teleport right the way back to Vlanko. Oh, yeah. I like that noise a lot, I have to say. And I like that you can color code the teleport lanterns. It's a fairly fun concept. I think this is some really nice sound design and it's some fairly decent graphical design too. But that is the Tele Lantern. And so what else do you get in the Tele Lanterns add-on? In case the answer seems like nothing, I read the book to be sure, and yeah, the answer is nothing else. This is a single purpose add-on. You get one brand new item to add to your Minecraft world, and so it may be the cheapest add-on, but I wouldn't say that makes it the best value for money add-on, but if you want to be able to teleport, it's the cheapest teleportation add-on. And it's not the only one we'll be going through today, so if you are curious, is it going to be the best? Well, I'm going to find out. But first, I want to download another fun one, because on the marketplace, you can find something called the grappling hook. This is something Mojang themselves made for an April Fool's joke once, so I'm curious as to how much better a full add-on version for three pounds can be. So this is the grappling hooks guide. There are 12 grappling hooks to create, each one granting different abilities. You can use them to scale mountains, cross ravines, and even make farming faster. Okay, that sounds fun. Let's, uh, there's six mobs that will use grappling hooks, free friendly, free hostile, and we're gonna need iron, string, tripwire, and whetstone. So already it's doing better on being actually accessible for people people who aren't in the late game, which is fairly handy in my opinion. But yeah, let's go ahead and make a basic one. Okay, here we go. Grappling hook one, two, and three. And then we're going to take grappling hook number two and turn it into an instant hook. And grappling hook number three and turn it into a diamond hook. I am very curious about what all of these things do because they look very, very fun in my hand. Again, I thought the one grappling hook was fun, but knowing that there's a dozen to choose from, well, that seems cool. So I'm going to grapple, first of all, the regular one and show you the... Uh, it's not really that effective in this situation, actually. Yeah, so it's not an instant grappling hook, uh, at least this one isn't. It seems to be more like an actual hook between two places, but it seems a little funky, so I'll try somewhere further away. Oh, 
I'll, I'll get closer to somewhere further away, and then I'll try and grapple up to that part of the building there. There'll be a nice straight line between me and it. So let's go. Okay, do I have to hold down the... I, I do not understand how that works. Unlike most add-ons, which give you a book when you first start, this one literally places one into the world when you first start, and so I'm going to understand how this works. You need to sneak to pull yourself towards the hook. Okay, I can do that. Okay, I'm sneaking. I'm sneaking. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fun. That's actually really, really cool, and only will probably end in my death. So the second hook here is a diamond hook, and as you can see, this is fairly effective. I can't tell you the difference immediately between this and a regular grappling hook, whereas the instant hook, I'm sure, is meant to immediately take me. Oh. I'm sure it's meant to immediately take me where I shoot, but I'm guessing it only works on certain blocks, maybe magnetic ones, because it's a magnet. So let's see what in my world has something, I guess, made of metal in there. The only thing I can think of is the bank of toy cats. So let's see if it will immediately hook me up even when I'm not crouched. So pro. Oh, yeah, it does. So that's actually pretty cool too. That it. Oh, yeah, that's really, really fun. Is it just magnetic blocks? Doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's working great over here. So this is the much more fun way to actually use a grappling hook. The fact that you can mix it with flying too means you can fly into the sky and then you can grab yourself towards some stuff. And then when you want to go up, you just shoot something in the sky and boom, here we go. This is actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's especially handy when you have something above you and an Elytra. Admittedly, if you have both of those things, you might be better off with a firework. But this is such a cool way to get around the world. It is very, very fun. There is no doubting that. This is an add-on built for entertainment and it is delivering. Oh, wow. If you hook towards the ground, you'll go real fast too. Very, very, very fun. I bet you could actually infinitely get energy from the ground because the amount of speed you get is so high. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, the amount of speed you get is so high that you can use it to get more speed, that you can use it to get more speed. Yeah, this isn't a... Oh, wow, that's too fast. But this is a good alternative to Riptide, Trident, and Elytra. If you want speed, you can get speed. Okay, we'll try again. Okay. We just have to kind of like arc ourselves down. But I have found the most fun way around your Minecraft world by a long shot. Oh, that's so cool. So there are hooks for everything from fishing to farming to placing blocks from a distance. But the two that stood out immediately to me were the mining hook and the explosive hook. So the mining hook is surprisingly effective. I thought it would just be a pickaxe, but from a distance. But look how much you can actually mine with a single block. This is equivalent to a 3x3 three three pickaxe, and it's just also on a hook. So you can do it from a distance too. But also it brings you closer towards the things you mine. So this is really, really cool for destroying a lot. Also, because this this is an add-on. Sadly, it has no durability, but that means that all of these hooks are OP, even the explosive hook, which this is just wild. It's a explosive, it's TNT attached to a hook, which means you can explode things from a distance. This is really, really effective on the surface for explosions to do a lot of damage, um, but also down under if you really want it to be that way. And so if you want to do a lot of mining fairly quickly, there is another add-on to do that. More seriously though, I do think the uh, um, initial premise behind this is kind of fun, but the fact that they actually fleshed it out with 12 different versions of their special thing, plus some mobs to find, actually makes me think that even though this costs 2.5 times as much as the previous add-on, oh no, watch out. Okay, we're getting you. I guess it's about triple as much as the previous add-on. Even though this costs a lot more, oh, it's a leaper. Oh no, <laughs> what is that? Um, even though this costs more than the previous add-on, I would say you get much more than three times the content, and so the value is much higher, even though the price is too. That is something you should keep in mind. I think I'm gonna die very soon. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna break the blocks below them, keep them away, and then I'm just gonna fly out of there. Oh, am I gonna make it? Looks like it. Honestly, I had an absolute blast with this add-on so far, and I do think it's probably the most fun you can have uh, with an add-on for this price. And so that is a serious uh, recommendation if you're looking for a fun add-on, and not necessarily a serious one, because it does have very serious balance concerns. Uh, you would never want to mine again once you get the mining hook. You would never want to do a lot of things again once you have the hooks, and that might be a negative as much as a positive. So speaking of things that are negative and positive, the next add-on has the high- Oh god, oh, it's a- <laughs> uh, The next add-on, um, okay, this is a Wrangler, watch out for him. 
So anyway, the next add-on has the lowest rating of any add-on we'll be reviewing today, as well as the highest price so far and the shortest name. It is simply called Trims, and when you look at the book, you'll notice that it looks like so, which I kind of like any amount of innovation here. But the idea behind Trims is what if you could trim your weapon and armor, wait, well, your weapons and tools, as well as your armor. So the first step is you've got to make a blast furnace, then you've got to open the forge interface, by right clicking or hole clicking, then you add your tool smithing template material, and then you can get trimmed items and weapons. So let's see how that works. I'm gonna craft a forge of eight cobblestones and one blast furnace. So it's actually a mega blast furnace, if you will. A fun fact about this, by the way, is this isn't a block I'm about to place. This is actually a spawn egg. So if I place it down, I can do it diagonally. Oh, that's so weird. I do not like blocks that are actually entities, but that's just me. And now we can add anything we like to any of these free segments. And I hope I have my armor trims hanging around here. I feel like I don't store them here, though. Oh, I got Neverite upgrades, but that's about all. Ah, yeah, here we go. So my favorite, my the one I'm proudest of is Silence. But I'll obviously bring a couple of copies of Razor, or the Eye, or you know, some of these. We'll, we'll bring them with us. Okay, let's give it a try. I've got a Neverite Ingot, which I'll put there. I've got a Smithing Template, and then I'll have to use a Diamond Tool, because otherwise it'll look kind of weird. Uh, so Diamond Tool goes here. And now instead of upgrading my tool to Neverite, I can instead... Oh, there we go. I can make myself... Oh, it takes a little bit. It, it takes quite a few bits, actually. But after a little bit of doing, I now have this, a Neverite, wait, a Silence and Ward tool trim Neverite material. Oh, you can upgrade to Neverite without needing the template using this. That is definitely not supposed to happen that way. And I do not know why it did it, but that's fine. Let's, let's try this again. So Neverite pickaxe over here. Oh, it's already trimmed. It won't work. So Neverite pickaxe over here. We'll take this smithing template and we'll take a, a copper, I think. That's like going to be the most colorful. Let's see what we can't craft. Let's go. So I'll just sit here and wait. It's okay. Nothing to do for me. Don't worry about it, table. You take your time. And there we go. So this is very weird because the text actually changes color too. You can barely read this text by comparison to this one, right? Like it's it's got some readability issues. But yeah, I got a trim tool, which I can now do to anything I want to. Oh no, I can't use it on a shovel. It's only... It's pickaxes, swords, so axes only. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll use my axe next. Okay, let's make a slightly diamond-tipped axe. Let's go. And while I do that, it's weird because you can only use swords, axes, and pickaxes, which makes me think there must be something else going on in this add-on. I mean, it costs five whole US dollars, right? This is a expensive add-on. They want more than the price of Minecraft on phones, which is understandable uh, if they've got something to show for it. So you can see that there's a forge and you use the materials and no, that's all you need to know. They fit it into about four paragraphs, which is very, I thought was very concise uh, as far as the amount of text they used. But no, it's literally, you can trim your pickaxes. That is the value you will get from this add-on. Do you want to have an axe which does exactly the same stuff? By the way, it lost its enchantments. So do you want to lose your enchantments and only end up with a slightly different looking axe? Um, if so, this is the add-on for you. I, sometimes I feel like burning money. And uh, this is the add-on that is perfect for when you're in that sort of mood. When you're not in the mood to literally light your enchantments, you know, your time and effort and your money on fire at the same time, uh, then I wouldn't say this is worthwhile. This is definitely so far a one-star uh, Minecraft. I don't understand how this is a 4.2 rating on the marketplace. How was there anyone that went into this and thought, oh, that was really good value. Let me give that a five star at the end. The fact that this is the lowest at 4.2 says something shocking about the standards that we have on the marketplace. But I, I, I really do think there's some good stuff mixed in there too. So let's uh, move on upwards and onwards. Okay, so attempting to find a better add-on for the same goal of customization, we have the Combine Ores add-on. This is one which is a very similar price, but yet at the same time uh, actually provides a much more compelling premise because what if you could take uh, iron and diamonds and combine them together into gem steel? Or what if you could take copper and iron and make copper ingot? And you can do this with more or less everything to make lots of new types of ingots, which then can be used to make lots of new types of weapon. So this is a cop- oh. Okay, I have no idea what's happening already, but I'm interested. So this is a Chakram, which- oh my god, wow! Already I'm excited. Let's use it to kill a wandering trader. 
So this add-on has already nailed a couple of things. One is that it has a fun concept that's going to make you want to actually play around with it. I love the idea of combining stuff together. The customization in it alone, if I could just make swords of that, it would already be better than the previous one, but it allows me to make unique weapons. So now I want to know what happens if we make some gem steel. I'm gonna make three of it and then I can make either a chakram or a blaster. Oh yeah, let's go for it. And what does a blaster do? I should have seen this coming, really. <laughs> Wait, guns in Minecraft. Oh, okay. Everyone everyone in chat agreed to hide this from uh, Mojang. To clarify, there's no chat here. I just like to call you chat anyway. Apparently, that's a normal thing that people are doing as a way to refer to uh, third person in general. Probably a concern about the amount we stream as a whole in this generation. But yeah, blasters and chakrams. And just on top of those things, the ability... Oh, sorry, is this a new wandering trader? Let's shoot him to death. See how long it takes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's fast. Okay, you could. You, there is basically no cooldown rate on this thing. You can just hammer things from a distance. A little bit OP, some would say. I would say very fun. Now, what I love about these weapons is not just the customization, but also it looks as though uh, they're actually unique weapons. You can't enchant them, but as you can see, they actually have durability, which means they're not going to be absurdly OP, even though this one, I mean, you can literally shoot things. That isn't necessarily broken because it does have a short range. And it is fairly, you know, weak compared to some of the weapons. Next up, the coppered diamond ingots. Let's craft a couple of these and use that to make a coppered diamond sword. So this is already better than a neverite sword, but can you enchant it like it is one? So like I said, this is kind of like the ability from before. Actually, do you think I can use this there? No, I can't. But this, um, this is a weapon I'm very curious about. Can you enchant it? Yes, you can. I love that. Just attention to detail and realizing that if people have long-term enough worlds, where they're going to get weapons this strong, that they'd want to have enchantments on them. I like that. I think it's a shame not to have enchantments for the blaster and the uh, the chakram, but I know that they can't add new enchantments to these. But yeah, the fact that I can put sharpness to on my sword, make it even more powerful, and then use it for whatever the heck. Actually, you know, instead of saying whatever the heck, let me actually use this and show you what it's good for. So it has some form of special attack. You might have just seen it right there, but this is the power that we can unleash. Oh, I think it's a defense blast. Oh, it works kind of like a sword from the olden days. You get, uh, so just a check right there. Resistance five for a split second, basically giving you the ability to block every now and again. Very, very cool, actually. Speaking of very cool, I think it'd also be fun to use all of the other weapons in here. Just, you know, shooting enemies to death is a very, very, very fun and satisfying thing. But also fun and satisfying is this. It's an alright staff. So there are so many combinations of things and so many different tools you can make of them. But let me just show you what this can do. I've right? got myself a staff. I charge it. And now I can do absurd amounts of damage. Having magic in is a mod about combining ores is something I was skeptical of. And thematically, I'm not sure if it perfectly fits. But in practice, it is still very, very cool. Also, there's uh, better boots that you can get. Wait, it's better than Neverite? How does that work? <laughs> I need to find out. Okay, the answer is you can't go above 80 resistance to damage. You can't go above the 10 armor stands that are right there. I think it'd be cool if you could. But still, as a uh, compared to a lot of the add-ons I've seen... This one is really, really funky and cool. I think compared to a you know, mod, if you're going to compare it to Java, uh, probably lacking in some options. But overall, I think the amount they got done with the limitations that the add-on system provides, really, really fun, actually. In fact, let's let's go prove it's fun by going on a little bit of a crazy one. Oops. Before I had my Elytra on, there's a, there's a reason that you should check before leaving. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go... Uh, find some enemies. I'm sure they're hanging out around here somewhere. And uh, let's let's use a fun combination of weapons. Mark them. Okay, okay. Throw the chakra and then start start shooting. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's such a silly thing that you can do this, but I love it. And honestly, that makes this a fun add-on too in terms of just the sheer joy it will add to a world while still actually attempting to be balanced. I would say it's probably not perfectly balanced in any meaningful sense, but it doesn't make it not fun, right? Because um, there is a level of balance where you're just hurting, where you make me realize there's one effective way to do things. All of these weapons feel equally good to each other. It's just there's no reason you can ever use a regular sword. Up, in my opinion. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, my boots broke really quickly. So actually, even though they gave me a bunch of armor, they broke just in that time. Anyway, so uh, let's quickly uh, round up and say that if there is going to be a five-star add-on, 
I think this might be as close as we're going to get. If we don't give this five stars, we're basically saying no add-on can be five stars, which is a valid thing to say. At this point in development, it's very early in the game. The uh, the JSONs or whatever aren't perfectly understood. Making add-ons is hard and, oh, interesting by the way. But uh, making add-ons is hard, so I kind of get it on that level. But I would have to say, uh, either you don't give out five stars yet and you just say that the system goes from zero to 4.5, or you say that this is the closest thing I've found to a five star add-on and I am loving it. I was I was expecting a lot of things to be cynical about today, but I haven't found it, which is why now I might have to go into the one I've been most cynical about on this entire list. So the planes add-on is a hard one to find because there are lots of times that various Minecraft studios have said, yeah, what if there were planes? But if you look carefully, the Planes Pro add-on looks slightly different to the rest and also is slightly more expensive than them. So let's see what's happening here. Welcome into Planes Pro. This has to be the add-on with one of the longest books you can find. It is 19 pages, not of fluff and images, but genuinely of text and guides, as well as crafting directly inside of it. I am beyond fascinated about how this works. And we're gonna start by using an arrow light right, right here. As you can see, crafting is done on a seven by seven crafting table, which is why they need to use the book to do it. And once you do so, you'll get this tiny little handheld item, but once placed down, it is much, much bigger. And this arrow light is the most basic plane that you can make. As you can see, it kind of uses some Minecraft marketplace conventions of having the speed be hidden in the bottom right there. And once you get it, you can fly with the camera upwards. And as long as you don't look in third person, everything actually looks like it's going just great. Honestly, I guess it works better than expected in third person, although maybe not perfectly. And uh, from this, we can jump out and parachute to the ground. I don't know precisely how. Okay, interact for par parachute. Go. I'm trying. I'm trying to get my parachute out. Okay, well that did not work. Well, I'm glad I had my own parachute attached, but that is obviously the lowest level gear we can make. By the way, because these are all entities, they don't, they're not that visible from a distance. Next up, we're gonna try out the Canada. Oh, I guess I, I, I guess I got myself a Canada right here. Let's give it a try. So this Canada is one that I crafted earlier. It's, it's really easy and I don't know where I sit, I guess over here. So let's get in and let's show you how this one looks by comparison. I am about to fly. It's a about to be beautiful through the skies. I need to get up and over this never rank block. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it, chat. Uh, again, I, I, I... This is a... Oh, no! <laughs> okay, so if you don't have a strong enough runway, and bear in mind, I have a bigger runway in my Let's Play world than most people probably have, but if you don't have a big enough runway, you will have a fiery plane. And so just, just keep that in mind, that if you do have uh, you if you have fiery intentions, this is a great add-on. Otherwise, maybe not so great But yeah, now I'm gonna try one last plane because I, I I do have to say what we've seen so far has been very interesting I think the auto crafting is smart. I think the fact that they have a guide on how to fly is great uh, But I'm gonna try and get the most advanced plane that I know how to craft and it's this one right here an F-22 Raptor What is it like to craft a- oh, I'm missing dark oak planks and gunpowder Well, what is it like to craft one? Let's go find out. Okay, this is one of the silliest crafting recipes I've ever been able to make, so let's go. Oh, oh, oh my god. It's got 64 in multiple places. Okay, that's fine, I guess. What isn't fine is this F-22 Raptor, if I crash it, however. And so I'm going to make sure that I line up not with the never rack at the end of the runway, but right here. This is about 400 blocks straight of clear spell. Oh, it's the wrong way. Okay, let's try and rotate the plane. It works. And then we're going to look up and press forward for takeoff. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, okay. Maybe not. Okay. Let's fly. So all of these planes, you know, this is meant to be an F-22, a fighter jet. But the speed is hilarious, right? Can we all agree on that? Okay, there we go. That's some speed. That's some... Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Um, I'm trying to get up. So as you can see, it's just, it just doesn't work very well at actually going places at a speed you would want to do. We look down. It goes down. We look up will come up um like ultimately this is so much you know this is meant to be a fighter jet this thing is meant to break the speed of sound that's you know the reason they're called like mac jets is because they break you know it's, it, that's a, that's the way we measure multiples of the speed of sound uh mac 2 should mean we're going twice the speed of sound which should be something like 2,000 kilometers an hour but i promise you we're not going anywhere close to that but with a firework rocket i go this fast so the planes add-on is very very cool and I gotta say, like, at least, unlike the other mods, uh, add-ons, that this one has fully featured stuff, it's just not necessarily for me. I think 
that if you want to role play with planes, being able to make them and having to go through this much work to get them is pretty cool. I mean, not everyone has these resources just hanging around their Let's Play world. So going out and getting the resources to make yourself an Osprey, to then have one that you can fly around and have friends that would appreciate it, that sounds really cool. But to me, this add-on was kind of a dud. I, I, I do have to say, um, not bad as in the overall sense of the word, but not something I will ever probably try again. And even, even when I do the silly thing of getting all of the add-ons in one world, what am I going to do with fighter jets is a real question that I don't know if there's a good answer to. I like the book, though, and I like the idea, and I think the models are well made. Uh, this is definitely a good effort from them. It's just not for me. So I think I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5. It's, you know, it's, it's with someone out there. This is your perfect add-on, but not most people out there. By the way, an important thing to note is even though there are add-ons on the marketplace now, you will still find worlds that look a lot like they are an add-on, like this TNT one, for example. Um, do keep in mind that in the top left here, it says exactly what it is. Um, but just be cautious. Make sure you go specifically to the add-on section when looking for future add-ons, such as the best rated one that exists. 15 Year Party Supplies is Minecraft's best rated add-on with 4.9 stars, and this obviously was an anniversary celebration, so the mood was good around it, but it's free, so what is the harm in trying it and reviewing it? So the 15 Year Party is a fairly small add-on, but the idea is if you get the party villager, he'll give you some party supplies, but to find him, you need a 15 year cake. Uh, the crafting recipe for the 15 year cake this is an official Minecraft map, and this is the way they do it. But uh, the official Minecraft add-on says we need string, honeycomb, and gold ingots, and then a 15-year candle and a cake. So cake, string, honeycomb, gold, let's go. I used to have a big pile of cakes sitting in my Minecraft world in this chest, and I have no idea where I moved them. You know, it's times like this where you feel like you should have an organization system. And it's times like this where I conclude that, nah, don't need one. So my crafting recipes are a little bit crowded at this point, but this is the 15 year candle, which I can then combine with a cake to make a much nicer cake. Honestly, you know, by itself, this add-on gives you a very, very nice thing. Do you have anyone in your life who is celebrating a quinceanera? Well, this is the perfect add-on for them. I think the important thing to say here is that this cake, once lit, will give me the fun reward. So now let's go ahead, let's use the flint and steel, and hey! Wow, okay. That was actually more than I was expecting. Animation and everything. Sounds. Hello. How's it going? Aww. That was my friend's quinceanera. So they are entirely free. So the cake is your price for admission. And once you have them, you can do stuff like blow bubbles or have a party horn. This is so silly. This is the most silly thing I have ever seen. <laughs> but also confetti cannons. Oh, look at that. Okay, I thought you might be able to hurt people with this, but you can't. Actually, can you hurt the villager in general? Let's find out. Let's drop the party horn, and let's pick up this, and let's go for it. As it turns out, you can not. I think that might be the mist. Let's really, like, get this dead on. Oh, he's immune. Perfect. So you can hurt him all you want, and he's not going to... Oh, yeah, he's, he's entirely immune to that. Because instead, you've got to give him a cupcake. Or you can give yourself a 15-year balloon. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Oh, you can place two of them for free, too. And so as well as all of these silly little items you get... By the way, unlimited food that also gives you haste and speed. Pretty good, if you ask me. We've also got some green bunting, some banners, some presents. What's in the presents? Oh, I'm excited to find out. Oh. Oh, you break them and you get a present. Oh, that's cool. That's always what I wanted. Um, and yeah, in general, this actually is really cool. Like, even though this is probably meant to be here. Oh, you can. Oh, fun. <laughs> so even though this is probably meant to be here just for a little temporary 15 year anniversary celebration, I could see this being valuable other times. If you already have a world that has add-ons enabled, this could be a fun one to add to the top of that just to do some silly extra things. You know, when your friends least expect it, you can go. <laughs> right in their face, which is what we've always wanted to do, right? So, um, honestly, you got to rate on the on the premise of value as well as the overall uh, like uh, goodness of something. And I would say, you know what? This is perfectly serviceable as an add-on. This is a three out of five. Um, it does everything it does just fine. There's not a huge number of reasons to use it, but there's not a huge number of reasons to use anything in life. Really, is you know, is that too much for a, for a Minecraft add-on review? If it is, then maybe we should move briefly into the next one. Oh, something's happening to me. 
Welcome to the Warpstone add-on. This is one of the most interesting looking ones to me because it does duplicate something from the Teleport Lantern add-on earlier, but it does cost four times the price. And so the obvious question is, is it worth it? Because exactly like the Tele Lanterns add-on, this does do precisely one thing. It obviously has a bigger, bigger, better guidebook and it's made by a studio that seems like uh, they think it's better, but that's not the answer to the question is, is this actually good, especially four times as good? Let's go find out. So first things first, the guidebook doesn't actually tell you how to craft anything. Instead, we have to go to a crafting table and then we have to go look for it. So it's a warp stone. We need a warp wand, which is <laughs> so hilariously easy to craft. We need a warp stone court, which is maybe not so hilariously easy to craft. And then we need a warp stone for various different things. This creeper warp stone is made from gunpowder and there'll be other ones I assume we can make later. But for now, let's make the wand, let's make the core, and let's see what a warp stone does for me. Yeah, I just have no idea how I'm going to get the ingredients to make this one, but I'm doing my very best right now. And wow, did I... Oh, wait, it's not in here. There it is. I did, in fact, succeed. I have a wand. Actually, wait, the game already gave me a wand. Oh, yeah, look at that. I already had a wand this whole time, and I just didn't even realize. Now, when I make a warp stone core, I can use this. Wait, where is... No, I can't. I don't understand. Okay, so I'm going to... I gotta put them together, maybe? Is that is that how this works? No, I don't understand how this works at all. Oh, but now I can craft all of these, by the way. Whoa, so many new types of warp stones showing up. I just don't have the ingredients for any of them. I've gotta say, I don't remember which add-on it was I downloaded, but if I say that the worst one was the, uh, you know, the, the trims from earlier, I'd be lying because whichever add-on added these weird flying things to the world must be the worst. You don't ever see them there. They just randomly attack you and make you feel bad about your day. So I'm going to go to sleep and hope they're gone in the morning. And while I'm here anyway, you know what? Let's go ahead and pick up the first item I can find that would go around my core. I think it's sandstone as we can see. So we drop two of that on the ground and then craft the rest into a sandstone warpstone. So now we're going to place this down. I skimmed the guide, but we'll see what this does. And now I've got a warp stone set here, which I can teleport to using my wand, which I've lost. Yeah, that, I definitely had a wand a second ago. It's gone now, though. Oh, maybe I used the wand while crafting this. It's a hard recipe to put together, but there is my warp stone wand. Let's use it on the warp stone. There we go. And now I can say that this is warp stone one. Perfect. I can also go to the settings and I can change the icon, change the name, unlock the warp stone. What does that mean? Wait, unlock warp stone. What? What? We're saying 11 now? 11. Oh, it costs, it, it costs experience and then you get more warp stone slots. So you start with three and then you spend XP to get more. I like that. I like anything that integrates into existing Minecraft mechanics in fun ways. Free feels a little arbitrary, but you know, what isn't arbitrary in Minecraft? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place down a warp stone just over here, and then I'm going to use this, uh, I'm going to warp to Vlanko, and then once I'm there, I'm going to put down a creeper warp stone next to my lantern, so we can compare the two add-ons side by side in the same world. So the biggest difference is the fact that you need a warp stone wand for the warp stones to work, whereas the tele lanterns work immediately without any of that. The other biggest difference is once you do have this, you need to uh, do a lot more customization after the fact of the warp stones, and also you need to spend experience to get more, whereas by default you have access to as many tele lanterns as you can have different colors for. I do not know how high that must go up to, but I imagine it's pretty crazy. Also, unlike the tele lanterns, the warp stone will allow you to teleport to your current warp stone, or at least it will allow you to try doesn't actually do anything, but it's a nice idea. It's also a little bit faster, but doesn't come with a flashy animation. So here is the question then. What do you think is better? Do you think that a fun animation with no limits is better? Or do you prefer a slightly better lore fitting in idea? One that requires a bit more work to carry around the warp concept all the time. Uh, it's better balanced, but on the other hand, it comes with a much higher price and honestly, not a significantly higher set of features. I don't think I could say that either of these are great examples of the warp stone idea. I think that if you're going to have a warp stone, you need to have other fun mechanics tied into it. You can't just say, what if we added teleportation to your Minecraft world? Because there's already a teleport command, and if you are playing with add-ons enabled, you already have to have your achievements disabled anyway. So I'm not sure that this does a substantial amount more than either. I like the tele lantern effect a tiny bit more. I might even go as far as to say, which is kind of disappointing because I wanted to like warp stones more, but I just can't tell you that I'm there yet. So yeah, I don't think I would recommend this to most people, 
But I love the, I, I, I really love the actual stones themselves. I love the idea, and I also like that they try to fit it into default Minecraft. So I'll give them the exact same as Tele Lanterns. I just also say, you probably would want to buy Tele Lanterns if you really are allergic to the slash TP command. Uh, because for a dollar, I could understand it. It's just for four is where I start to say, eh, maybe not, right? Next up, we have the most expensive add-on currently available in the marketplace. It is tied with a couple of others, uh, but the ones it's tied with are very good. How good is the furniture add-on? Well, apparently it has a thousand functioning furniture and decorations, so let's find out. Welcome to the furniture add-on. I was tempted to just say, you know, I'm not gonna uh, justify this with a uh, real in-depth time because it's furniture. There's not really that much you can do with it. They mostly use entities to make the furniture exist, which means it doesn't really feel like correct furniture. It feels like you're getting knockoff Minecraft items that you paid a little bit more for, but this one sounded interesting to me. The reason I decided to proceed was because on the first page they mention that there is actually a brand new furniture mention. Uh, uh, I say first page, it's the fourth page. There is a furniture merchant who has stepped foot in your world, and I'm excited to see what he offers. I'm excited to see what he adds to this, because they say there's a thousand uh, pieces of furniture, but then they managed to fit them all in 48 pages, so slightly skeptical of that one. But yeah, let's trade with the furniture merchant. As you can see, he sells bell pepper seeds, tomato seeds, corn seeds. So there's all sorts of uh, different uh, farming things you can do here. But also he'll buy your jungle stool off you, or your pink lotus pads, or your warped queen size yellow bed. So yeah, the way they get to a thousand items is by doing a little bit of like working around the edges and stuff. But yeah, you can also craft a whole ton of stuff. Seriously, look at my crafting table now. Here are all my recipes. Not all of these are from the uh, furniture one, but like if we want to make an oak counter, there's a fairly reasonable recipe for that. Do we want to make an oak side table? You actually can use this if you want as just a fairly simple add-on to put a few pieces of extra furniture around your house. And unlike all the other furniture add-ons where it's mostly entities that you walk right through, these actually exist as blocks. It's a furniture add-on where the furniture is real furniture. Look, I can store stuff inside of my furniture from earlier. Wow, isn't that crazy? My, my drawers work as drawers. I, uh, you know, I went into this very cynically, but genuinely after it, I'm like, yeah, this is actually really cool. You could build a house and it would actually function, which means that for the first time I can say, this is a furniture add-on that functions as a furniture add-on. And is that worth the $8 to you? Well, I mean, that's a very big question that I don't think I can answer on your behest. But what I can say is a little bit of farming is cool. A little bit of, uh, you know, customization is cool. But then on top of both of those things, having actually functional furniture mixed in with the occasional bit of non-functional furniture, really, really cool. I would say that some of this stuff is a bit of a weird decision, like maybe the lamp should have to have redstone power. or You know, there's, there's things where I feel like I would do it differently. You know, but in terms of just... Looking at it objectively, actually pretty darn cool. I want to put this down. Oh, when you shift click, it doesn't change the way the drawers work. So maybe, maybe I have to place some sea lanterns behind it. And then I'll place it on the side there. And then I'll break the sea lanterns. Yeah, I can get around your, your mistakes here. But yeah, look at this. Isn't my kitchen beautiful? Maybe it's not. Maybe this isn't the best kitchen. But yeah, solid attempt. I don't like furniture add-ons. But trying to see past my biases, the only big downside to this is its cost. And... Uh, as a result, I would say if this, if this was slightly cheaper, you'd be like, yeah, perfect add-on for people who want furniture. Otherwise, I'd say it's a solid three and a half stars. Um, decent for what it is. Adds fun to farm. Like, it adds a lot of a lot to a, different, a lot of different areas. And that kind of is one of the things that almost makes it feel justifiable in terms of price. Which is why I would say, solid, solid job. Really, you, honestly, really, really good job to XP Games. Uh, but speaking of XP Games... Let's uh, go in for a nap, and then let's go into the final add-on of today. Welcome to the morph add-on. It's very confusing. The text was a little missy there. But now I have a morph gauntlet, which is given to me immediately upon loading up this world. There's also a little guide right here where I could learn... Oh, it doesn't... There we go. Oh, it's a physical book. There's a guide right here where I can learn how to craft another one. So it gives me the equivalent of five, em five iron and a, a diamond just for loading this up. And also, it gives me the ability to turn into any mob just by looking at them. Allies, armadillo, oh, and they all have additional effects. Okay, so this is actually a lot of work. The morph add-on at first that felt like it was such a lazy, silly idea, but I'm excited about it. Let's go morph into a creeper. Oh, okay, I did not, I do not understand how that works correctly. So I guess now that I've interacted with a creeper, I can just use it and then turn into one this way. And now I'm a creeper. 
<laughs> so yeah, I can now do creeper things, such as explode. Can I just explode on Will? Wow, I can. I don't even die like a regular creeper. But yeah, I'm going to now morph into a pig. See what these abilities are. <laughs> this is silly. This is really silly. But I could honestly, this is a really weird one, but I see it having some of the higher value of an add-on to a lot of people, which is great. So I'm just going to look through the book. I'm just trying to, I don't know how to, okay, I did not do a good job looking through that book. I am still a pig, so you can see my perspective is down here from a pig. And also, I can't sprint. And so, uh, really, you'd want to pick your mob that you're turning into based on your needs at the time. Oh, I turned into a drown, so now I'm, now I'm dying in the daylight. That is a very fun feature. So instead, I'll turn into a chicken. <laughs> and I'll find sheeps as well. So the, um, the, ex the charge creeper does still explode. Fun fact. Um, would not recommend going near those. Also, when you die, you lose your morph gauntlet. So you have to go ahead and find somewhere else to get it, which is a little bit of a thing. Also, yeah, it seems to unlock when you're anywhere near an animal, even when you don't necessarily do something to earn it. So keep that in mind. But yeah, I'm finally going to live my Minecraft dreams of becoming a cat chat. <laughs> Can I beat Minecraft if I'm a cat? It's finally coming soon. Uh, that is a joke. I'm pretty sure. I mean, it could actually be fun to beat Minecraft this way, right? I don't know what my ability is. I kind of want to find out. Oh, I can change color. Is that is that really my ability, though? Yeah, the the cat ability is being able to be a different type of cat. Is that is that their, their best trait as a race? So yeah, I can become a cat. I can become any mob I like. And this is really fun if you're playing in multiplayer, I can imagine. Even in single player, I think it's goofy fun. Um, the actual value of this, probably very low. Like how it's not going to help you with your Minecraft world. It's not going to unlock new creative possibilities. But if you just want some good, wholesome, silly fun, then this is probably the add-on for you. <laughs> what happens when you become a villager? I need to know. Um, so the villager effect, in case you're curious, do I get emeralds for free? That's what I would guess it is. Oh, I get the hero of the village effect. So you get preferential trading rates with other villagers when you become one of these guys, which I think is such a goofy idea. Anyway, now uh, there are two things left to do. One of these things is to give the Morph Gauntlet mod a rating. And honestly, I would love to, you know, like try out every single animal and every single add-on first. I think that's how you would be most informed about an add-on like this. It's one that actually takes a long time to experience all of its content. So I think given all of that in mind, if you're in like a multiplayer setting where you really like want to goof around with your friends and maybe have them not even necessarily realize for a bit, this is going to be priceless. It's a, a 5 out of 5. For everyone else and for the general use case, I'd say it's a bit closer to a 4 star add-on. It's perfectly solid. Um, you know, there's always uh, more than it could do, but it picked a focus and it did it really, really, really great. And so that is my overall view of this. But the second thing that I have left to do uh, is obviously to put all of the add-ons on at the same time. Oh, you know what? Let's become a parrot. That's my actual second thing to do. Let's see if I can fly. Oh, yeah, I can. It cost me health, it looks like. Wait, what? Oh, the health just went down to match the parrot. But look, I can fly in Minecraft. I mean, I already could fly. I can fly much slower. You know what? What is it with Minecraft add-ons and saying, what if you could fly, but like way less effectively than you currently can? And uh, that seems to be the dream that most people want to live. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put all 10 add-ons on this world at the same time and just have a tiny bit of fun with it. So can 10 Minecraft add-ons work at once? The answer is yes, because fun fact, I've done it for this entire video. Every time I added an add-on, I just stacked it on top of the previous ones. And this is one of the beauties of the add-on system. It's good. It does so much less than any Java mod can. And that's because instead of the Java mods being written, they basically take the source code and rewrite it. Minecraft Bedrock has to add on in the particular way that Minecraft uh, itself allows them to do. And even then, it doesn't allow you to use most of them. They have to, also I can't, I don't think I can fly the plane while I'm a parrot. This is a crazy thing to realize about the interaction between these. But yeah, let's go back to being a human so I can get in the F-22 and I can say that Minecraft Bedrock add-ons are very particular pieces of JavaScript that Minecraft lets you use and then they have to be rigorously reviewed and there's very, very strict standards on what you can actually do. Uh, but that, uh, even though that stifles the amount that you can do with it, you could argue to some extent the creativity with it, but uh, even though that definitely is happening, uh, it does lead to all of them working perfectly together. I have uh, not just one, not just two, but ten add-ons working right now. I think the most we've got working at one time is uh, something like 28. And so now the fun question is, how many add-ons can you get before your world breaks? 
It's a question I'd love to answer, but for now I'm just going to enjoy flying over my world in an F-22 jet, which seems like it's going much faster now, right? Like, I, we got to Mach 3 and, okay, no, we, we slowed down. <laughs> it was nice while it lasted. Speaking of things that are nice while they lasted, I hope you enjoyed this video. This isn't the last time you'll be seeing me playing a sandbox game with a fighter jet, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, I'm also excited to see uh, everything else um, that you have to say about these, because for now, I've been IBX Toy Cat. Thank you for watching my add-on review, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Wait. What?